We think about Christmas and we think about Christmas morning, the birth of the Christ child. We don't think about all those generations of God's people that waited and waited and waited for him to come. And we hate waiting. We all do. Waiting is the worst. Remember when you were a little kid, how long it seemed to take for Christmas to get here? If you're, if you're a kid today, just understand, it's going to take a long time. In fact, this is how I can tell the difference between an adult and a child. I, when I say the words, Christmas is 13 days away, all the adults say, oh no, that's too soon. And all the kids say, that's going to take forever. And they're right. Because the next few days as you're still in school, you're going to look at the clock and it's going to seem that the clock is stuck. It's not moving you're going to feel like, I'm eight years old, but my hair is turning gray and my teeth are falling out and I have this weird desire to sit around and watch the news all day with the volume turned up really loud and I'm just, I'm getting old right in front of my own eyes and, and Christmas isn't coming. But life is waiting, isn't it? You're, you're always waiting for something. You're going to wait in line on Christmas Eve for the pecans that you forgot to buy for the you know, the sweet potato casserole, right? You're, gonna, you're, you're probably waiting for a package to come in before Christmas and hoping it arrives before that day so you can get it wrapped. You're, you're, you're going to wait for family to come in from out of town, maybe a kid who's off at college and you're hoping they make it home uh, in the next couple of days. You're right now waiting for me to stop talking so we can get back to the music. <laughs> and, and then there's those kinds of waiting that we can't really joke about. You're waiting for your spouse to talk to you again after that argument you had the other day. You're waiting for that loved one that you haven't talked to in years to answer your call, that you, you, you finally took a risk and reached out to her and you're hoping she calls back. You're waiting on your boss to tell you if you still have a job, waiting on the doctor's office to call and tell you the results of those tests you took this week. And sometimes when we're in that point of waiting, we wonder why God doesn't give us some kind of reassurance. Just tell us he's there. Tell us what's going to happen. Maybe even give us a little fast forward button so we can skip to the good part. And he never does that. And we're not alone. When you read the Bible, when you get to the Psalms especially, you hear over and over again a, a common refrain, how long, Lord? How long must we wait? When will you show up? When will you display your awesome power? And yet, Galatians 4.4 4 says that in the fullness of time, God sent his Son which means that Jesus came at exactly the right time. All those generations of God's people that waited in vain, they didn't know that Jesus was coming at exactly the right time to redeem them and us. His timing is always right. And when he came, he came not for the purpose they thought. They wanted a king who would reign on a throne. They didn't know they had a savior who would die on a cross. They wanted someone who would destroy their enemies, not someone who would redeem them. And that's exactly what he came to do. And what they found out was that what they expected wasn't nearly as good as what happened. God's always on time, and He always knows how to answer our prayers in the best possible way. So if you're waiting right now, if you're struggling, just trust Him. Just tell Him, Lord, I, I believe in you. I trust you. And He'll redeem that time of waiting, and He'll answer those prayers in a way far better than than you can imagine. He always answers every prayer the way you would pray it if you knew what he knows. That's the joy of being his child.